Today we're doing a modification to the Airstream. We're going to add these gas stop propane shutoff valves onto our tanks. This is what the valve looks like. It's a device that normally you would just simply connect it between your propane tank and your propane inline. And what it does is it works off of pressure. And if the pressure drops on your propane system, this will shut off the propane tank so that you don't discharge all your propane, which could be a safety hazard. On an Airstream, unfortunately, because of the front tanks being in a aluminum enclosure, we have to change the hoses so that they have a 90 degree bend on it to give more clearance for the tank, for the device. This is also something you should do on a periodic basis anyways. These hoses tend to fail, well, they are dry out and crack and, and then start to leak. So it's probably a good idea to replace these maybe every five years or so. So we bought a kit that comes with everything I need to do both tanks. These valves are about $75 a piece. The hoses are about 30. So the whole kit for the two of these is, runs about $200. So it's a little pricey, but it does have an additional benefit that you now pick up a gauge on your tank so you can tell the, how much propane you have, which would be, make it a lot easier. You know, typically what you end up doing with these is you, you run one tank down and then it goes off in the middle of the night, you know, when you need your heat furnace and you have to go out and switch them. Now I can, you know, at least check on them and, and watch and see if I got one tank to start and to go low. I can set it up so that it automatically switches to the other tank overnight and I won't lose anything. And then I can just switch and refill the tank the next day. So let's get started. First step on this update is going to be to take the cover off the tanks, obviously. This is what it looks like once you get the cover off. You can see that the hoses here are just attached here to this diverter valve that switches up to each side. And you gotta just unhook these and swap them over. This is where the stop valve would mount right here. And it would push this back here beyond the edge of the tank, which would get in the way of the cover. So you need to swap these hoses out. Tools you're going to need are basically going to be just a wrench to undo this. You're going to need some Teflon tape which is included in the kit when you put this all back together. So then we're going to disconnect both the tanks, just make sure they're both turned off. We're going to disconnect them, set them aside so we can get at these hoses and then we're going to remove the hoses and swap them out for the new ones and then put it back together with the stop belts in place. All right, so I'm going to remove both tanks. And just aside. At this point, I could either use a crescent wrench or a open end wrench. We're going to see if I have the right size here. Looks to be a 9 16th, which we have. You are going to get a little bit of discharge of propane because the system is under pressure. Obviously, it goes without saying do not smoke while you're doing this. So these both, these hoses are out. They seem to be in pretty good condition. Um, I'll hang on to them as a backup hose in case I ever need it. Here are the replacement hoses. You can see it doesn't directly fit. It does need an adapter. And so, we'll start by installing the adapter. We we'll use Teflon tape on it to make sure it seals. We don't have any leaks.
Get it into the threads nice and tight. Make sure you're not covering the inlet. Hand thread it in to when it gets started. Oh, this is gonna take a different size. Looks like it's a five eight. Yep. And tighten it down. Careful not to over tighten it, you will bend the bracket. Do the same thing for the other one. I'm using a pocket knife to cut the tape. Might be easier to use scissors. The Teflon tape is a good thing to carry in your toolkit. You never know when you might need it. Next we'll apply a little bit of Teflon tape to the hoses, the new hoses. Actually, these don't need Teflon tape. If you look, they have a different type of fitting that should seal without tape. Get the right one here eventually. This takes a 7 sixteenths. Use your 5 eighths on here so you don't over tighten and just tighten the two together. And what I mean by a different type of fitting, it's not sealed at the threads, it's sealed at the end of it, there's like a, a, a ball socket that when you tighten it up, they press in together tightly and seal. All right, so that's done. So these are now ready to put the tanks back in place and connect these stops. All right, so I've noticed one thing right off the bat. And I don't, yeah, I think I can adjust it. This regulator needs to be raised up because these hoses are hitting the tanks. Thankfully, this is adjustable. You want to be careful not to raise it up too much because this does need to come down on here and lock your tanks in place. You don't want these hoses here hitting on the tank, causing a, a sharp bend in the line. Now I still have the same level of adjustability and how I connect up my tank and tighten down, so it looks good. So what I want to make sure is these hoses here clear the tank and not are pinched against it the way it was before. So this is better and should work well. Now you can see these lines will come right up to the tank and attach on. 
but the valve will go in place here. So this is where the valve attaches, the gas stop valve. Right in here, put the gauge up and tight. And now your propane line comes in and attaches right here. like that. Make every, sure everything is nice and tight. It looks like it should clear very well. Gas stop valve attaches directly to the propane tank, just like your hose did before. Tighten it up. Take your hose, and that tightens right on here. Just like that. Next step in the instructions is open up the gas valves. And you need to pressurize the system. You need to pressurize this line. You do that by pressing down on the gauge. And you do this, it says four or five times, six times, something like that. And now you can see the gauge will jump up and show the tank level. Okay, so we're gonna check for leaks. So what I have here is a, a bottle of soapy water, just about a, um, three ounces of water and about a drop of uh, Dawn dishwashing detergent. And we're just gonna, you wanna just saturate wherever you had things apart. Just make sure things are tight and not leaking. Our leaks, you should see bubbles. Everything appears to be good. And both the tanks are showing full. This one is down slightly, but this one is up there. Next step I would be to just simply go and test your propane, go light your stove or something, just make sure it's, it's working. There you have it. We've added some safety measures to our propane tanks. We've also added some convenience since now we have gauges on them so we can tell how much propane we have. We are all set to go.